Yeah. So how did you uh, hook up to coming to Tilsonburg? What was the connection from Brantford to Tilsonburg All right. and CKOT? Uh, it was through Ken Orton at uh, CKOT. Uh, I was an operator at, at uh, in Brantford. Longer story is that I knew a lot of the guys in Tilsonburg because I was a member of the scout groups and so on there. And one night, uh, Jack Eckett introduced me to a guy by the name of Ken Orton. And Ken Orton, all of a sudden, was talking about how he was going to put a radio station on the air in Tilsonburg. Very dynamic very, very person, I'll tell you. And uh, within a year, he had put the station on the air. He had eight partners put the uh, poll together, one of whom was John Lamers, who eventually bought out the whole business. And then, uh, so Ken was the program director. First of all, he was the technical director. Then he became the program director, and I became his first hire as a program di- as the program director. There were other station operators there already by that time. Uh, Frank Taylor had the morning show. Bill Irwin was there. Um, Eric Finch was there. I replaced Eric. And, and uh, oh, guy by the name of John Q. Holmes. Everybody, everybody had John Q. at some point in there. There was, <laughs> there was John, Robert Q.'s Waxworks was the big disc jockey show out of the U.S. at that point. This predated Wolfman Jack. Okay, so he had Robert Q.'s Waxworks. And Robert Q. became Robert Q. Holmes and Guelph and so on and so forth. They were all different people, but Q. was the was the name that they had to have at that point. So anyway, wow, that's funny. That's yeah. that's really funny. Um, so under, I'm trying to understand this. Was the K O in C K O T Ken Orton <laughs> at Tilsonburg for the T? A lot of people. You know? A lot of people said, "Yeah, C K O T stood for Crazy Ken Orton Tilsonburg." Oh, okay. Okay, because <laughs> he was he was a very dynamic person, and uh, you no, know, no, it was actually by coincidence. The way the call letters are assigned, of course, K is one of the the, the alternate call letters. C for any Canadian radio station. K F I, I and so on and so forth. G for a second letter, and then Oxford Tilsonburg was the, was the designation at that point officially. Um, talk a little bit about the programming back then. Well, when you, you when you, you were there me earlier on about block programming. Block programming wasn't in yet. This was something new. We were still doing half hour radio shows, half hour music shows, and and uh, uh, there was a women's editor, uh, oh, Thelma Hyatt, who came in. Uh, she was there for years and years after that. Uh, and then we had the famous afternoon show was the Strip Room Serenade. And I have to be very careful when I'm talking to anybody else in the business about that because they will raise eyebrows when you were doing what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had the Strip Room Serenade. and Which, okay, as far as the Tulsenberg audience is concerned, in the strip rooms during the wintertime, this would be the time when, you know, farm to farm to farm to farm, they would be sending dedications back and forth across through the radio station, through Strip Room Serenade. At one point, I counted, I had 500 requests in one, one week. We, uh, and then because it was daytime only, in the middle of winter, of course, you would sign off at a quarter to five in the afternoon, and we will be triple spotting. In other words, three commercials, uh, a piece of music, dedications, triple spot, so on and so forth. It was a, a very, very, very lucrative operation was Silsenberg. It was, of course, tobacco was still king at that time. Rothman Cigarettes just bought carte blanche. They had the 8 o'clock news week after year after year after year. So, Wow. Yeah. Um, tell me about, uh, was it 25 London Street? 25 London. 25 London Road was the boarding house. <laughs> Ma Pettit's boarding house. Ma Pettit used to take in boarders. I guess there were three or four places in, in town that they had boarders and so on. But Ma had uh, oh, eight guys who lived in, plus she had uh, lunch and dinner people that would come in too for lunch and dinner. Um, there were a variety. There was a barber who lived there, and there was a, I can't remember what Hank did. I think he worked at a plumber. But a lot of the radio people came to live with, with, uh, with uh, Ma Pettit. Uh, I was there. Uh, it was actually Bill Irwin who got me uh, in as a, as a boarder. Uh, and then, uh, uh, let me see, Dick Bordeaux was there. Gary Fielding was there. Gary Fielder, rather. Gary Fielder was a very interesting man. He, uh, he was from Toronto, um, did a jazz show, a rather sophisticated jazz show. 
went to, uh, went to, or- to Oakville after that, went to CBC, and went on from there. He became a writer uh, in, in, uh, in Nashville, wrote for Hee Haw, and wrote for Mary Tyler Moore in Hollywood. So, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I guess back then as well, I mean, one thing I knew growing up in Tilsonburg was the fact that Wednesday afternoon, everything closed. Oh, yes, yeah. And stayed open on Saturday night. The idea was that the tobacco farmers, you know, they would, would finish up, and any of the farmers in Orish, because we did the same thing, uh, they would finish up on, on Wednesday early and then stay open until 9 o'clock at night wow. in the stores, yeah. What was Tilsonburg like back in the 50s when you were on the radio there? You must have been a celebrity in the town, weren't you? Eric Finch certainly was. Eric uh, took over. He, he was the first one. I think the celebrity was Ken Orton himself. Um, uh, his background, very interesting. Uh, he had the Midas touch. If anybody had the Midas touch, he, he knew exactly how to make money, and he, and he did. He came to, to, to Canada from, from England. He had been in the Martian Marine, and I know for a fact that when he arrived in Tilsonburg, he did not have two nickels to rub together. He went to work for Art Woolley. Art Woolley was his sponsor. Art Woolley had a sign painting job, and uh, Ken worked for him. Within two years, Ken had bought out Art Woolley. Art was working for him. Then Ken, uh, at the same time, he had a car, and, and he was driving around. He had a couple of horns mounted on, the, on his car, the PA speaker, and they would drive around the streets of town doing commercials. So he would, <laughs> sounds crazy now, but that's, that was how it was done. Out of that, he got the idea, let's do a radio station. Uh, radio was, was still very much small time, but it was starting to really bloom at that time. And there were a lot of, of uh, daytime-only radio stations that were coming on the air. Tulsenberg was one of them. Cheer in Leamington was another. CKGR in Galt was another. Became later CFTR, or CFTJ, rather. Uh, Simcoe was on, and, you know, I can name a few others. Uh, and Chum. Chum at that time was a daytime-only classical music station. Going broke. And by uh, 1958, when uh, they suddenly switched uh, formats and went rock and roll, first rock and roll station in Canada, and I went to, to uh, from Tilsonburg to Guelph because Guelph at that time was also uh, switching over to rock and roll, and I became a rock and roll DJ before I went on to or CKCO. 